Oh, she's Stephanie. I wanted to talk a minute about, um, I'm in the middle of my flashcards and I had a flash that I need to talk to you about dyslexia again. I briefly mentioned, I think in a video, we way deep in a 20 minute video, I talked to you about, um, I have a, a minor dyslexia or something like that. Um, it's mostly with numbers, but it sometimes hits with letters. And sometimes for me in English, it even hits with words. I don't even know if it's considered dyslexia. With numbers, it's definitely dyslex dyslexia because I will go back and see the two, two numbers literally transposed. With English, when I'm reading, I notice that, and this is really hard to describe because I've never heard anybody else describe it, but I've noticed that letters and sometimes entire words kind of move as I'm reading them. And I swear I don't take any hallucinogens, but this has happened my whole life where if I'm not really focusing, what I'm reading will literally move as I'm reading it. Um, this has never stopped me from reading excessively, um, but um, it's, it made it really, really difficult until I created some workarounds. And I don't even know how I created these workarounds. I think I was so desperate to, del to dive into other worlds and to learn that I just pushed forward until I found things because I didn't know how to say any of this when I was a child and it was it started happening. I just figured everybody had to deal with this and they didn't seem to be complaining about it. So why the heck should I? Um, I was not courageous to admit problems or anything when I was a child. So um, nor did I have the language or maturity to do so. It was only uh, later on in life when I tried to do um, engineering in college uh, that I was able to put some words to it and go get tested for uh, learning disability um, so I could just have time to do my engineering exams um, because I was running out of time because my workarounds for dealing with this um, took more time than, nor than people without these issues would need for the really intensive exams that I was doing in my engineering classes. And throughout all of the testing, and I'm like 26, 27 years old when I went through this. I went, I, I went to university for a long time for financial and other reasons, life reasons. Uh, anyway, so I went when I was like 26 or 27 to get tested for learning disability and I went through a full battery of tests and the man sat me down and I'm, I'm literally crying through some of the tests because the visual things he was asking me to do were so difficult and I didn't ever have to do them before. So I didn't have any workarounds and I'm literally tearing up and tears are coming down my face as I'm trying to do the simple tasks that he's asking me to do. And the more frustrating thing is the result was uh, he said, well, you definitely have some things that some spatial issues cognitively, but you have enough workarounds that I can't give you any recommendations for your courses. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? I went through these hours, you know, an hour or two hours worth of tests. I'm in tears. I'm emotionally distraught. I feel worse than when I came in and I was feeling pretty bad by not being able to do my coursework to the best of my ability in something that I actually found very, very fascinating. And you tell me that, yeah, there's something wrong, but it's not bad enough to get just time. I didn't want any other special allowances. I didn't want the tutors that came with it. I didn't want any of extra stuff. I didn't want people to take notes for me, which is one of the options, depending on your disability. I just wanted more time so I could do the tests with my workarounds. And their their reaction was, no, we you can't have any of that. So I knew at that point that there was something different in my brain. And, um, and there's that. So I haven't actually hit anything new until now, until studying Mandarin Chinese, Pudonghua. <coughs> and what I'm noticing, because the words, if you'll look at, for example, in this, there's one syllable, there's another syllable, this has two syllables, right? I've noticed that even though in English it tends to be letters that switch and sometimes words that switch, but most of the time it's letters. And when there's a series of numbers, it's numbers that switch. So it's very small increments that, that switch on me. Um, with Chinese, it's the syllables. Even when there are multiple components in one syllable, I will remember them switched. So it's like I'm remembering the pinyin 
like this is one syllable, this is another syllable, but I'll 